Hello, everyone. I think you guys know me from Zoom. Uh, my name is Mark Rosenzweig. Um, I, I'm five foot eight. I don't know if you guys knew that, but uh, I thought you guys probably thought I was like six feet or something. But uh, any event, um, it's nice to see people in 3D. It's been uh, almost two and a half years, three years since we started doing the Elk Talk series. And I uh, just want to say, uh, please mute yourself and uh, we'll start the program. So um, when Dan came to me and said, hey, you know what, I got this great idea. Why don't you host this? Um, you got 45 minutes to start speaking about Elk Talk. And I said, you know what, the only way I can do that is by having my uh, friends come up here on the stage. So um, we'll start with Ruby, we'll work, work our way down. Oh, by the way, I noticed that the other um, patients said how long they've been diagnosed. I'm nine months, I'm nine years, eight months and 20 days. Not that I'm counting, but that is my uh, since diagnosis. So thank you. Ruby, you're up. Hello, everyone. My name is Ruby Blow. I was diagnosed December uh, 2018. Um, so that makes me almost five years survivor. Where you're from. And I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, I'm Sherry Haynes. I live in Tampa, Florida, and I was diagnosed in September of 2018. So almost five years. Hi, I'm Heather Smith, and I was diagnosed in um, May of 2016, brain fart, it happens, and I am from Wisconsin with, in Appleton, so we're like 30 miles south of Green Bay. Hi, um, I'm Dana Credo. I live near Westchester, Pennsylvania, and I was diagnosed in November of 2020. Hi, I'm Suzanne Remington. I'm from Connecticut, right outside of New Haven, and I was diagnosed in November 2019. I am Jordan Meyerson, Boca Raton, Florida. Diagn <laughs> Originally from New York. <laughs> and I was diagnosed September of 2016. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Hu. I'm from Philadelphia, PA. Great to have you guys in my town. Um, I guess I'm the newbie of the group. I was diagnosed in March of 2022. Hi, I'm Ellen Rudel. I'm from Reston, Virginia, outside of DC. Um, but I'm a native Philadelphian, and I was diagnosed in December of 2017. Hi, my name is Yvonne Diaz, and I live in London in the UK, and I was diagnosed in August 2021. Uh, as I'm still on the microphone, it seems like at all times, but I tried to get out of this, Mark wouldn't let me, but no, um, these guys are all like awesome, way more awesome than I am. So I'm hoping to hear and learn from all of you guys as everybody else is, but uh, Dan, outside of Philadelphia, um, February of 2019. Hi, I'm Summer Farman from Hershey, Pennsylvania. So just a few hours away. Um, I was diagnosed in the summer of 2020 on my 21st wedding anniversary. And I will let you know that this year when I had my third year cancer anniversary, I forgot all about it. I actually celebrated my wedding anniversary and didn't think about it. So for those of you who are just diagnosed, it does slip away. Well, let's get started. So uh, Summer, hit the next button. All right, so back in 2020, I uh, tried to do a fundraiser and uh, I screwed it up. And I got a call from Gina Allenbach. Gina's the co-founder of Elk Talk. And uh, without her, she challenged me. I said, I got this great idea. Why don't we do Zoom groups, you know? 
Um, my local cancer group does it, and we can talk to each other through Zoom. She said, you want some sort of great idea? Why don't you do it? So our idea was to bring in uh, elk experts through uh, Zoom. So, well, well, okay, here we go. So, Summer, I know you tried to, whoa, keep that slide right there. So, what is Elk Talk Healing Arts Program? There, there's two really separate components. Uh, the Elk Talk that you guys probably all know about is we were bringing the Elk experts through Zoom into your living room. So, the Ask the Experts, I think it's so unique that what we do is uh, doctors come on through chat. You can go ahead and answer, ask questions. We really don't have an agenda. Uh, we do give the uh, doctors maybe a topic, but the conversations go anywhere. And that's what's the best thing about it. I believe we are the only patient run program like that. So it's a great opportunity. And I actually think that the, silent, silent, the science and knowledge that comes into your living room is uh, unbelievable. So, and then second component is uh, we offer free weekly, monthly self-care workshops, which uh, you can be found, and we'll get to that. Next slide. Summer, next slide. All right. <laughs> so Dr. Al Shaw, just as an example, this is Kurt's computer. And uh, there's a picture of Dr. Shaw. She came on twice, uh, and you, there are the dates that she came on. Next slide. Dr. Ras Kamage also came on twice, and uh, it's a picture of Dr. Kamage uh, leisurely with his arms folded and probably talking a lot. So, next slide. Some of you might remember these people. They just came on. Um, and Jessica Lynn, you were the first doctor who came on and that is December 13th, 2020. So, um, next slide. Okay, this is just like a happy hour event that we had one um, day, I think on a Friday probably, and people from all over the world come on, and that's why Ivan's here representing the other parts of the, the world, and we meet people from New Zealand, Australia, all over through Zoom. How can we grow our programming? November 2020 was our second month that we started. The Elk Talks were just open mic conversations, um, and we had a few events, and that was really about it. So if you look at April 2023, you can see the huge difference in programming, and we'll get to that in a second. Next slide. Here are some of our healing arts programs that we offer. Some of these are monthly, some of these are weekly. Um, you come and go as you please. You don't have to sign up for anything. Just jump onto our Zoom channel. Next slide. Okay, these are some statistics that I thought were pretty impressive. We've had 47 Elk Talks. We've had 7,000 live viewers. We've had 27 YouTube hits on our Elk Positive YouTube channel. We've had 400 patient workshops. And these are from patients all over the world. Next slide. So think about it, you've had 47 different, pretty much different opinions, doctors, unbelievable. Contact us. So go through our email um, in elktalk at elkpositive.org. And you know, on YouTube, you're not gonna remember this URL code, but we are on Elk Positive Inc. YouTube channel. Next slide. That's it. Oh, that's it. All right, so the reason I brought these people up on the stage is not just to introduce them, but this is going to be like a typically what we do on our Elk Zoom. So just think of these people in Zoom squares. So, <laughs> right. So I'm going to start with Ruby. Ruby is going to offer a roundtable group that, uh, and we have someone from London, who's also going to offer a roundtable group. What well, roundtable group is, and Ruby will explain it, but it's a closed group. It's not on our calendar. So, Ruby, give us a little background of A, what the roundtable groups are. Do. Thank you, Mark. So, basically, it's a support group. It's a place where you can come meet other people and 
continue to meet with those same people. So it's more of a closed program than what you, what the other groups are that you see listed. Gives you an opportunity to get comfortable, to be known, to know other Alkies up close and personal, enter at your own risk. Um, but we laugh together, we cry together, we support one another. Uh, sometimes just starting out the group, you'll have more specific activities to help you get to know one another. And basically what Mark is saying is that I'll be starting a new round table support group. I was a member of, I guess the first one, the first one in our group is still meeting. Can I ask the people in my group who are here to raise your hand? There they are back there sitting together. Back of the room. Mm -hmm. As well as Mark. And, uh, you know, I, by profession, I'm a, a counselor, a professional counselor, but in my support group, I'm just Ruby. So it doesn't matter what you do um, or don't do, um, you can join a support group and give and receive support. And, you know, nobody else understands what it's like to be us, but us. And so this is a place where you can talk about that or not. Sometimes you don't want to talk, but you just want to show up and be with other people who get it. And that's what support group is all about. Have I over talked or? Oh, yeah, that's it. You're done. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we're going to move on. Yeah. Heather Smith. Heather is our mindset research, uh, reset coach. And uh, Heather and I were talking earlier about when you progress, Heather, back in 2019. So you were diagnosed 2016, correct? That's correct. Okay, so what is the mindset when you do progress? What would the 2016 Heather Smith say to the 2000, well, let's back it up. What would the 2023 Heather Smith say to the 2019? All Heather right, Smith? that's such a great question. I spent a lot of time thinking about this. So I'm gonna split this into two answers, okay? The first two years are completely different and I know you guys can attest to this. What you experience day to day, what you think about day to day is different. It's boots to the pavement and you're just trying to get stuff done. You're trying to understand, you're trying to learn all those things. The Facebook group is a fantastic place for that. Like I feel like we go into our doctor's offices uh, more thoroughly armed than they're prepared for. And I see Camage, okay? So like if I come in and I ask him a question, he's like, wow, that's a really good question. Where'd you get that information? I was like, well, <laughs> the Facebook group. So if you're under two years, I would say, A, you are not alone. B, we are here to support you 100%. And the biggest thing is that we can guide you on your journey. We can point you towards resources that you most need in those first two years. Now, when you pass the two year mark, your mindset changes, everything changes. It becomes the duality of um, living with cancer, living with cancer. You know, like we're, we're still facing this dichotomy in our lives that is more challenging because you're like, oh my gosh, I've survived this long, now what? And that was what happened to me in year three when I had disease progression. It took a massive, the universe is not always very nice to me and kind of kicks me in the face. I <laughs> literally wound up with seizures, crashing my head on a concrete patio, uh, bleeding out, hospital, ambulance ride, it was a whole thing but I woke up in that hospital bed and I just knew that I was not living my life how I could best live it. And that was living with cancer. You know, I was going to be the one who was leading it. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, it's good that you're here. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go to Jordan Meyerson. Jordan is in other groups, other cancer groups like me, but out positive cancer groups what is the difference between an alcohol positive cancer group and a cancer group? So one of the biggest differences between a regular cancer group and an alcohol positive cancer group is alcohol positive, we're all dealing with the same thing. We've been on the same meds. We deal with the same symptoms. We walk in the same shoes. 
I'm in different uh, support groups uh, back home, uh, Zoom and in li live as well. And I don't have the same symptoms or feelings as people with prostate cancer or breast cancer or lymphoma. So out positive brings me together with my community and people that I can really relate to and feel what they're feeling and learn from them. And that's the most important thing to me about the support groups. All right, hand the mic to Suzanne. Suzanne. <laughs> Suzanne started a book club group. She came to me with an idea. I'm like, I don't read books, but okay. <laughs> Sounds like a good book club. Um, just, uh, we'll start it up. So Suzanne, uh, that's how we start our groups. People come to us. So Suzanne, tell us a little bit about your idea of how you came up with to the book club. I was part of the writing club, so I sort of modeled the book club after the writing club. And I wanted another springboard, really, for another way to connect. And I thought a book club was a perfect way to do that. And so we meet once a month, and we um, try to pick really thin books so Mark will <laughs> participate. I didn't make it through he the first book. Come. <laughs> and um, we usually, we love to argue the books, and we um, are very strong, opinionated people. What a shock. And so we either love something or we hate it, and it's really fun. And I think we have a good sense of humor. But really what, what it is is a chance, again, for people to connect. So. All right, pass the mic back to my, uh, Michael. Do you have your own mic, Michael? All right. Uh, yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Michael came to, into our men's club group and our mindset group, and I looked at him and I said, geez, you're young. And uh, <laughs> Michael, tell us, you were a little timid at first, but you jumped in with your feet. What, what do you think about being in a support group? What do I think? It's really been, like, like, like what Heather said, there's certain phases in your ALK journey um, that are, they are different from other phases, right? And so um, at a, in the beginning, I kind of shied away from the Facebook group when I was just grappling with the gravity of this new change in my life. And it was just triggered by, you know, posts, uh, you know, the, the, the sad posts mixed in with the positive posts. And then, you know, there's these out talks and what the heck is Death Cafe? And like, um, <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I'm not going here. And, you know, thankfully my, my wife would curate the posts for me and like, hey, look at this one, look at this one, right? But at some point, you know, like I had my information um, and kind of like what Jordan mentioned, right? It's, it's one of those things where like, you know, who else is, I, I need to start talking to somebody else, you know, besides my poor wife about um, this disease. I need to be able to connect with others who know what I'm feeling. Um, and I, I think I first gravitated toward the mindset group because I was like, well, I need to figure out how to look at my life, you know? And so that's why I started to uh, look at these resources, which, you know, the triggering had kind of subsided. I had, you know, kind of gotten used to, I'm, I have cancer, I can talk about death, right? So, you know, the, you know, being able to come into the, the Zoom groups and be able to connect with others who, you know, you don't have to like say too much. You can kind of talk the same language, right? You know, you, there's almost like a subculture to being an ALK positive, right? Where like, you know, we we know what not to say to each other <laughs> as well as what to say. Um, like we get each other, we understand like the different struggles that we have as ALK versus say other cancers. And so um, for me, it was, it was just so, such a great, I don't know, forum just that, you know, in both the, the mindset group, which, you know, really gets you thinking, like you don't necessarily have to be the one kind of in the hot seat talking, but just hearing and okay. listening to other people's journeys, other people's struggles, it just, you know, it all resonates For with For a guy who doesn't absolutely. know how to talk, you, you're talking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Wait, what made you think I wasn't the talker? Uh, pass that to Alan. <laughs> yeah, and I... Yeah, I move this thing along. Done. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> I don't put people in a hot seat, I don't seat, typically do Mark. that, but uh, I have no choice. Alan, you're my next victim. All okay. right, so Alan... It came in our group and 
I think you've done like four groups before, guide imagery and so forth and so on. Um, but we've also have lost in the group. And uh, talk to us a little bit about, we lost both of our writing um, instructors this year, uh, Linda Webb and Sarah O'Connor. So talk to us about how to deal with that. Okay. Um, thanks to Mark, I've become a healing arts groupie. Um, our writing group was started by Linda Webb and Sarah O'Connor um, of blessed memory, both of whom we've lost, um, but we'll never forget. Um, they live on in our writing group. Um, our writing group is a source of friendship. I'm good. I can only repeat what everybody else has said. Um, we like love each other. Um, it's just, you know, seeing some of you guys here in person today, I'm, I'm going to cry, you know, it just, it's just wonderful. But about the writing, okay. You don't have to be a great writer. You, you have to like to write. I mean, if you didn't like to write, you wouldn't do it. But you, but you don't have to be a talented writer. And we don't write about cancer all the time. Um, we write about things like the house you grew up in. And um, if you had something in your metaphorical pocket, what would be in your pocket? Um, those kinds of topics. The topics vary tremendously. Um, we spend a lot of time checking in and just chatting. Um, we write for anywhere between 12 and 15 minutes. We share our writing if we want and give each other positive feedback. Um, but the bottom line is we love each other. It's a wonderful, wonderful group, way to connect. Absolutely. And Yvonne Diaz, Yvonne comes in from England. We have a lot of people from international um, people that jump in. I know you're, what, five hours in front of us? Five hours. Five hours, okay. So you're, you're making dinner by the time we do the, our events. So Van um, Death Cafe, uh, I, people have asked me to change the name, but our, the Death Cafe people said don't change the name. So tell us a little bit about the Death Cafe. I, I think I felt like Michael when I was first diagnosed and, and I came across the healing arts and looking at the various different things. Again, in my time zone, I looked at what was convenient for me to join. So 1 p.m., 6 p.m. is actually a good time for me. And I was intimidated. I had a little imposter syndrome. Am I sick enough? Am I deathy enough? And well, you know, is that going to be OK to join this group? And I, I found it such a life affirming group. You can really talk about the most um, anything, really. Sometimes we just talk about how we're feeling, what's going on in our conditions. So you can learn so much from your fellow Alkies, but also we can talk about these topics. And frankly, some, some of these topics are really difficult to broach with your loved ones. I only want to talk so much with my husband, my kids even less so. Um, so it is a very safe place to, to talk about these fears. I think when I first joined, there was a month where there were a number of, of deaths and, and you know, I think Dana, you picked the topics with Mark and probably others, but I always felt the topics are right on um, and just how do you deal with news of progression? How do you deal with news of, of deaths from, from your community? And like I say, sometimes you get into these, you because you, you break into these smaller rooms, you're actually having rather intimate conversations. It's actually quite nice. You might join, there might be 60 of us on the Zoom call, but you go into this tiny little room with three other people. You can have quite a nice little chat and get to know them. So yeah, a great place to make friendships, a great place to have these very personal, deeper conversations or just frivolous conversations too. That's great because you get to get, get into different groups at different times and meet different people, which That's is it. great. Dan, you got to keep it very, very short. Men's group. The men, I'm typically with women uh, most of the time in these uh, healing arts groups. But we started a men's club at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern time. So I got very close to some of these men. And I would say probably 75% of us showed up on this uh, summit. So Dan, why is it so powerful? Um, you know, uh, a lot of guys don't like to talk about their feelings. So. Typically, when people join, Mark calls on them and makes them very uncomfortable right <laughs> off the bat. No, it, it, Mark just asks for a simple introduction just so we know where someone is at within their journey. Um, and once they hear others start to talk about their feelings a little bit, they feel, they feel safe. It may take them a meeting or two. Um, that could be a month or two months um, to get to that point. But it becomes extremely powerful. So two years ago, we started a, a men's breakout room at a virtual summit um, and myself and Bill Westlake literally just spent an hour and five or an hour and ten minutes um, and the person never rotated and that person has now been with us 
for just about every men's talk. He was in the hospital for a number of the men's talks and he would join from the hospital. Um, and it just shows you how powerful, um, you know, when you guys, when people get together, um, just like a summit, um, how powerful that can be for others in, in healing and giving them the safe place to talk about their feelings and their experiences. When right. you, you know, put that together from a men's perspective, it's it's pretty special. Yeah, move, move the mic, man. Move the mic. Uh, all right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, I rely on two nice. people. You're not nice, by the way. You're really I, 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 I hurt your feelings. <laughs> uh, we'll work it out. We'll hug it out later. Um, so anyways, Elf Talk would not really be so smooth without two people. And uh, Dana Carito stepped up to the plate and has been helping me with the Zoom room operations and monthly calendar, weekly sessions. And really without Dana, we wouldn't uh, be, I guess, uh, working as well. So uh, Dana does come up with the Death Cafe uh, questions. How do you do that, Dana, real quick? Um. I kind of watch what's going on in the, um, the the support room on Facebook, and I base my what people seem to really need to talk about. And I mean, I do do a little bit of research into um, you know think other bigger topics that people might want to talk about. But I just really base it off what people seem to need, and I bring that to the group once a month. Okay, great. And uh, I think you guys know summer. Summer and I are uh, co-hosts of the Elf Talks, and I brought Summer on. Gene and I were talking about legacy and moving on to uh, this program has to keep continuing with or without us. And uh, I brought Summer on because I knew, uh, first of all, let me do, so explain to them how you evolve, first of all. <laughs> Um, also, a little side note, usually during the out talks, I am texting Mark saying, let him go. Let him let this person keep talking. So I'm really sorry I'm not here to moderate that right now. <laughs> Plus, you moderate my time. So <laughs> we're limited time here. Go ahead. Yes, but you're doing great. Um, I first got involved um, soon after the inception of art therapy when my daughter said, um, are you just going to sit there? Are you going to hop into art therapy? Um, and I went, and that was it. I dove right in. I met my family. Yeah, she didn't say it that nice. <laughs> um, met my new ALK family, and then knew I needed to give back right away. Started helping um, Mark with the healing arts and happy hours, and now um, about two years with ALK Talk. And how do we come up with topics or, or speakers, by the way? Topics and speakers. Well, I happen to know somebody on a medical committee. Maybe you all have seen him before, Ray Hall, my dad. <laughs> so I do get some insider information. Um, and then just again, having close relationships with our different medical committees um, of things on the horizon, different trials that need um, to accrue patients um, or different avenues that we need to inform our community about. Also suggestions, we love suggestions, whether it's for a healing arts class or whether it's for an ALK talk topic that is huge and invaluable. So anytime you have ideas, reach out. And also like Dana, I watch the Facebook support group and see hot topics, disability, what people might be struggling with, um, palliative care or whatever. And then we look, nutrition, anything, we look at to pull in those resources. Okay, so art therapy was your first group, right? Correct. Yeah. So I was lucky enough to know an art therapist who I see at five o'clock every Wednesday. I don't do art, we just talk. But uh, anyways, so my next uh, person speaking is, uh, is Sherry. Sherry and I have known each other for probably two and a half years or so, probably. And uh, Sherry, tell us a little story about your how you progress with your art and what happened. My first healing Close. art. Closer. My first healing arts was um, art therapy, and I was so nervous because I thought you have to be an artist or you've got to have talent to be go to art therapy. Um, I soon realized that was not the case that you can go, and um, we really just express our our art um, through emotions and feelings, and you know everybody's interpretation of it is different. And um, I just really developed a love for 
sorry, <laughs> for watercolor. And I ended up um, doing um, fundraising and stuff for Al Positive um, through watercolor. I was really inspired by actually um, Lara Vaz Pato, who passed away. But um, yeah, she was a really a, a truly an inspiration. And the reason I can be so rude to these people is because I know them very well. <laughs> and, uh, and the reason I know them very well is because I see them at least twice a week. I, I actually call them my friends versus my real friends, which I guess are at home, but they're really not real friends. <laughs> and I just want to add a couple of other things that uh, came to my mind as we're winging this. I mean, we do not have a script. We're not, we've met a couple of times on Zoom just to talk about the, how we're going to arrange the chairs, et cetera. But these are organic conversations. I mean, we do not plan our, our activities. We just get on Zoom and start talking, and all of a sudden we become friends with each other. And you jump in and jump out whenever you want. There's no fees. Everything is volunteer-based. Um, it, it is truly amazing. And like, uh, I see Jessica in the front row, but I don't even see my own doctor. He must say, Dr. where did Dr. Yago go? Do you live? <laughs> Anyways, but the reason I, it's 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 a, such a relaxed setting, you know, and you know, I I'm I'm actually dressed up for this. Normally, I just wear a t-shirt and maybe some lounging pants because you're at your computer on on a Sunday, and and the reason that outpatients are so um, they know their stuff is because of the elk talks. And I'm looking right now at Ken Culver. And your mouth is dropped, but uh, Ken, we kind of, I, I think you, you understand where we're coming from, right? I mean, you, you get it, you know, because uh, Ken came on and I just said, Ken, yeah, well, this is what we do. And uh, the doctors come out. I mean, they give up their Sundays, which is truly, truly amazing. And uh, no different than Dan's been talking about. We are so fortunate and uh, we're so fortunate to have these groups and to have the doctors come on, and I'm truly amazed, and you guys have done a great job. Um, is there any last words anyone wanna say? Jordan, we have a few minutes left. Summer, how many minutes? I just wanted to say that, you know, there's plenty of different times throughout the week or at night to join into one. So you could just put your name up there, mute yourself, and listen, it, if you don't have to say anything, nobody's taking attendance if you don't come next time. Nobody's gonna shout, you know, call you out if you, if you miss a time. It's just, it's for you because it's about us. And when I say us, I don't mean us on here. I mean us at, in here. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna give my time back to, uh, oh, Heather. I just wanted to follow up because one thing that I heard continuously through this is like, I didn't feel like I was like I belonged or I wasn't sure where I wanted to start. It doesn't matter. Just try one thing, one time. That is all it takes. You can do it. You're welcome. We're normal human beings. And some of us have really wicked senses of humor. It's kind of fun. We laugh a lot and we don't talk about cancer all the time. Uh, okay, Sherry, last comment, then we gotta give the time back to Dan. Okay. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, with all the losses we have in our out community, I, being part of these groups, we really support each other and are there for each other um, through the losses. Okay, Dan, you get your time back. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I really appreciate everything that everyone does.